judgment and eternity. Part 9 The Judgment of God Chapter 1 The Judgment of God is on Man God is judging the nations. That is, his judgment is on men, on mankind. Psalms 9 Arise, Lord, do not let man be strong. But let the nations be judged before you. Ezekiel 39 And I set my glory among the nations. All the nations see my judgment. The sword of the word judges the flesh, the wicked, kings in our hearts. Jeremiah 25 The Lord has a controversy with the nations. He is entering into judgment with all flesh. As for the wicked, he has given them to the sword. Here is an example of how the Bible speaks of the nations. As the flesh, and also as the wicked which God is destroying. Isaiah 41 God delivers up nations and subdues kings. He makes them like dust with his sword. Hebrews 4 For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the separating of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. God judges our souls so we can be delivered, set free from man, from the world, from our wickedness. Psalm 17 My judgment comes forth from your presence. You have tried my heart. Arise, Lord, deliver my soul from the wicked with your sword. From men with your hand, Lord, from men of the world.
the heart and the wicked and man and the world. Jeremiah 15 If you separate out the precious from the worthless, though they fight against you, they do not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, declares the Lord. So I deliver you from the hand of the wicked. Christ is setting the captive free from what is wicked. And I redeem you from the grasp of the violent. Psalms 97 Hate evil, you who love the Lord, who preserves the souls of his godly ones. He delivers them from the hand of the wicked. God, your judgments are righteous. When you judge me, it is right. For it is destroying the wicked. John 16 But I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And he, when he comes, will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Psalms 119 Your hands made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. May those who fear you see me and be glad because I wait for your word. I know, Lord, that your judgments are righteous and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. May your loving kindness comfort me according to your word to your servant. May your compassion come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. Psalm 7 The Lord judges the peoples. Vindicate me, Lord, according to my righteousness and my integrity that is in me. Let the evil of the wicked come to an end, but establish the righteous. 
For the righteous God tries the hearts and minds. My shield is with God, who saves the upright in heart. God is a righteous judge. If a man does not repent, he sharpens his sword. Psalms 9 When my enemies turn back, they stumble and perish before you. For you have maintained my just cause. You have sat on the throne, judging righteously. You have rebuked the nations. You have destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name for ever and ever. The enemy has come to an end in perpetual ruins. And you have uprooted the cities. The very memory of them has perished. The fate of what is wicked is not the fate of what is new in Christ. God's judgment is a good thing that we should be looking forward to. Psalms 19 The law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true. They are righteous altogether. They are more desirable than gold, yes, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is a great reward. Who can discern his errors? Free me from the guilt of hidden faults. We are not equipped to work out what needs changing in us. Also keep back your servant from acting proudly. Let it not rule over me. Then I am blameless, and I am declared innocent of much transgression. Psalms 20 
Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Chapter 2 When we suffer, it's not because we are being punished for the things we have done. The suffering is a natural consequence of what is inside the heart of mankind. The only way to be set free from being hopelessly tangled in the ways of the old self is through processes which are often uncomfortable or painful. God is just, so what we suffer will result in great reward. Many of the word pictures used in the Bible sound harsh. But they are only there as pictures to describe the process. God knows what man is like. His intention is that Jesus builds the holy city and sets the captives free. Isaiah 45 The Lord, the Holy One of Israel and His Maker, says, Ask me about the things to come concerning my sons and command me concerning the work of my hands. It is I who made the earth and created man upon it. I stretched out the heavens with my hands and I ordained all their host. I have aroused him in righteousness, and I make all his ways smooth. He builds my city and lets my exiles in captivity go free. This release from captivity needs ploughing of the heart, which has only been producing bad weeds and trouble. Jeremiah 26 Zion is ploughed like a field. Hosea 10 So with a view to righteousness Reap in accordance with kindness Break up your fallow ground By seeking knowledge of the age-lasting God For you must seek the age lasting until he comes to rain righteousness on you. 
You have been ploughing evil. You have reaped disaster. And you had to eat the fruit of your lies. Because you have relied on your way, on your numerous warriors, we are to rely on God and His strength. If we rely on our own resources, God sets about disrupting that. See Isaiah 31, they relied on the horses of Egypt. In verse 3, the Egyptians are man, and their horses are the flesh. See link 13, Isaiah 31. Therefore tumults arise among your people. God builds his kingdom, starting with the cornerstone, Jesus, birthed in us, and from there he works on us. First John 5 Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Psalms 147 The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Isaiah 28 God says, I am laying in Zion a stone, a tested stone, a costly cornerstone for the foundation, firmly placed. He who believes in it is not disturbed. I have made justice the measuring line and righteousness the level. Hail sweeps away the refuge of lies. Your covenant with death has been cancelled and your pact with Sheol does not stand when the overwhelming scourge passes through. For the Lord rises up to deal as though he dealt with foreigners and to do his task, a task so strange to him. The latter part of verse 21 is from Moffat's translation and seems to match the Hebrew sense more closely. Link 13 
I saw thirty one. Do we rely on the horses of Egypt and not on God? Egyptians speak of man, our own self, and their horses speak of the strength of the flesh. Isaiah 31, verse 1 Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help, and rely on horses, and trust in chariots because they are many. And those who trust in horsemen because they are very strong. But they do not look to the Holy One of Israel, nor seek the Lord. Yet he also is wise, and brings disaster, and doesn't retract his words. But arises against the house of evildoers, and against the help of the workers of iniquity. Now the Egyptians are men, and not God. And their horses are flesh, and not spirit. Matthew 5, verse 3 Blessed are the poor, the needy and powerless, in spirit. The strong, driven horses and chariots have been worked out of this person. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven, This was Hell, Judgment, and Eternity, Part 9. Mm.